why do we def how do we define black we're going to see what is jew so what is jew and what is hijack so they'll use maccabees and say look the heathen sought to paint the likeness of their images okay how is the messiah described in the scriptures he will grow up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground he had no stately form so it wasn't coming in these three piece tuxedos or majesty to attract us he didn't have his head high neck high coming on a riding on a, a horse but he did ride on a donkey <laughs> no beauty that we should desire him so it wasn't looking creme la creme let's get a little bit deeper with these questions and our investigation let's get a little bit deeper with our questions and our investigation so i did point out before that this is fake news this all of this stuff here that's going viral and all the gatekeepers that are making people drink kool-aid is viral this is an ai image yeah this is ai this is artificial intelligence this video there's like two different types of the video and it's inconsistent but it is what it is this image here is actually a, a correct image from the book that's interesting the features of this person here is interesting that's actually from one of these books all right and this is the video that was out six years ago they used this ai generated image and that's what went viral but i'm gonna allow that i ain't got time for that you drink kool-aid or you i don't care anyway so we're gonna go and move forward quickly which nose is flat very swiftly which nose is flat which nose is flat 1a all right cool 1a 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 you know what you guys got a stars for that because yeah both nose are flat so irrespective of color you can have a flat nose irrespective of color you can have a different nose all right so don't relegate noses to color and color to noses all the time however we're going to see that there are certain phenotypes that people have more regularly than not yeah so just bear that in mind so i'm gonna share a quote now by josephus so let's listen to how he described the character yahushua or the person the individual jesus or yahushua let's listen to how he described him at that time, there also appeared a certain amount of magic power. If it be met to call him a man, whose name is Jesus, whom certain Greeks call a son of a God, but his disciples called the true prophet. He was a man of simple appearance, mature age, black skinned. He was a man of simple appearance, mature age, black skinned, short growth, three cubits tall, hunchbacked, with a long face, face long, a long nose. What? Eyebrows meeting above the nose. That means he had a unibrow. That means his, his, his eyebrows are touching eyebrows. What's going on there? What an ugly looking piece. Of, anyway, with scanty curly hair. Or woolly hair, curly hair, whatever you want to call it. But having in line in the middle of, but having in the middle of the head after the fashion of the Nazarenes with an underdeveloped beard. So he couldn't really grow a proper beard. So this is not an image of Jesus. This is not an image of Jesus at all. This is a Romanio Egyptian mummy portrait dating between AD 70 and AD 180 so this is not me saying this is Jesus yeah this is just an image of a Romano Egyptian a Romano Egyptian now beard so it's not underdeveloped long nose interesting unibrow which is interesting eyebrows meeting above the nose and then the hair texture whatever you want to call it and it's copper color right interesting 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 again this is not an image of Jesus this is a Romano Egyptian mummy portrait dating back to the AD 170 to AD, uh, AD 170 and uh, 180. Anyway, all fair. We are going to go somewhere, my brother and sister. This is a madness. Because people, hey, don't get triggered, man. I'm gassed. Couldn't believe how ignorant I was on this topic until these people put out this fake video and I felt to just reinvestigate the whole thing, the whole matter, and be, cons and be persuaded in my own mind based on facts. So these are Yemenites. These are Yemenite Jews that you can find in Yemen. Interesting, right? These are actually Yemenite Jews. Copper colored, right? Various different hair textures and, and features. But whole fire before you get irritated and irritable. We are going to go somewhere because if something keeps reoccurring, it has to be a theme. It can't be denied. It's like science. Test, prove, verify. Qualify. Now let's continue. So these are Yemenite Jews. Interesting. All right. Now here are some Yemen, more Yemenite Jews. 
Interesting. Let's continue a little bit more. Now these are Falasha Jews. Now Falasha means wandering Jews or lost Jews and according to Stephen Coakley it's not really a good name to call yourself lost when you were already where you were supposed to be. But I digress for the sake of time. Different varies in hue. Yeah? We can't be impartial to history. We have to just let history be history whether it cuts us, annoys us or it disturbs us. It's cognitive dissonance when there's two informations that we we can't reconcile, we get flustered, we get irritated. But let me just show you again. So going back to this. Long nose, unibrow, curly hair. Now, this is Alexandria, Egypt. These are some mosaics from Alexandria, Egypt. Old school images in museums from way back, from Wapi Donkey. Alexandria, Egypt. Now remember Egypt was called Mizrahim, that means two. There was two cities in Egypt, there was two places in Egypt, there was upper and lower. It was originally called Mizrahim, then it became called Egypt. Yeah? But there's two there's two facets of Egypt. And there's a massive caste system in Egypt. But anyway, let's continue, let's advance. Let's look at Alexandra as found in the scriptures. So let's go to Alexandra. Acts 18:24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria. So where's Alexandria? It's in Upper Egypt. It's here. It's by the Mediterranean Sea. It's at this part. It's not at the low. It's not in upper part where Sudan is. It's here, the lower part, by the Mediterranean Sea. The reason it's called the lower part is because the water goes down. It doesn't go up. The water goes down. This part and this part were once considered the land of Egypt or Mizraim. But that's another story for another day. Let's stay on topic. So. A certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, a mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. Where's Ephesus? That's when you go up here and you catch a ship, you go into Greece. Ephesians, Ephesus. Interesting. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. So you go from Alexandria, and you go on a ship again, and you go right into Italy. Or, uh, or you know, Sicily, wherever you want to go. Italy, Sicily, the whole thing. Ship from here. So this was very big when it came to maritime, when it came to transportation. Alexandria was a big port. So he had there Paul going to Greece and then also going to Italy. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria. Again, Alexandria is a big port, which had withered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. All right, cool. So just again, just emphasizing Alexandria. Alexandria is a name and you can find the name on, it's a real place, it's not made up. Now, who was Alexandria named after? Well, I'm glad you asked. Alexandria is named after who? I'll stop for you to guess. But there's a big clue in the name Alexandria. So Alexandria is named after who? Alexandria, the so-called great, right? And the reason it was called the Great is because he did a lot in a short space of time. Whether he did it directly or indirectly due to the military um, mercenaries that he had, it's debatable, who cares? But he went around conquering places by the sword and naming places after himself. In fact, many places were once called Alexandria, 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 Alexandria. But this part of Egypt to this day is still called Alexandria. And this part of Egypt has a high influx of different people going in and out of it. This part of Egypt is like one of the, the, like the biggest capitals of the world. So for example, it's like a London, it's like an Edinburgh, it's like a place where there's a lot of people coming to and fro, to and fro. All right. Now check this though. So there's Alexandria. So Alexandria is Lower Egypt, named after uh, the Greek Alexander. Now Lower Egypt is the northmost region of Egypt, which consists of the fertile Nile Delta between Upper Egypt and the Mediterranean Sea. So it's right near the Mediterranean Sea. And this little star here is Cairo. So remember we said that, or I said, and you can verify, look into it, the bishop in the fourth century said that Christ grew up in here, Cairo, somewhere around Cairo, Mataria, Mataria, so M-A-T-A-R-E-A, M-A-T-A-R-E-A. You might find it as M-A-T-A-R-I-Y-A. -A -A. This here is Anwar Sadat. Anwar Sadat. He was assassinated. Now, adjacent to Anwar Sadat is Ramses II. I can't say his actual Egyptian name because it's just too much. 
Yeah, Uzama, Atare, Sati, Benari. All right. So Ramsey is a second. Now, which pharaoh was ruling during Moses' day? So which pharaoh was ruling during Moses' day? So I just want to show you that this is Anwar Sadat. Yeah, he's, he's, he's actually mixed race, believe it or not. He's actually mixed. Yeah, but you wouldn't know because he's, he's, he's dark, right? Now, I don't even like to use the mixed race thing because it doesn't make sense. It's multi-ethnicity. He's of two ethnicities. And he actually, he actually encapsulates Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt because his parents represent Lower and Upper Egypt. But we're going to get into that momentarily. So all the way to see is we have to have, that has to be some, some kind of facts. It has to be scientific for me. It has to be, it has to have logic. It just can't be black and wishy-washy feelings and stuff like that. It has to be solid like a rock. So look at him phenotypically. Yeah, look at the head shape. Dolicocephalic. We're going to get into that as well, dolicocephalic. He has a dolicocephalic head shape. This is Ramses II. He was ruling during Moses. How was about that? Yeah? Now, whether you want to, whether the people have lightened him up or darkened him up, that's, I couldn't even care about the dark and the light thing. Yeah? Just phenotypically, there's his corpse. There's his nose. There's his nose. There's his head shape. There's his head shape. Interesting, to say the least. This is Ramses II. All right. Now, in the scriptures, well, according to this Russian icon book, these are the early pictures of Paul or the Apostle Paul. Early art of Paul. Art thou that Egyptian, which before these days maddest an uproar and leadest out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? So these are depictions of Paul. And I mean, funny, he kind of could looks like them. He kind of, they look the same. I was like, yo, what's going on? That's interesting. They kind of have the same head. <laughs> there's a dead man, Ramses II, preserved. And there's a, an assassinated president. And they could all kind of blend and pass. Now, if you are on some centricism, you're not going to be able to digest, digest this information because your information is biased to centricism. White-centric, black-centric, Indian-centric, centric-centric. Let's continue. So there's Anwar Sadat. Now, like I said before, Anwar Sadat is a very interesting guy because he's quote-unquote mixed. He's quote-unquote mixed. But forget mixed. He's just dual heritage, dual ethnicity. Yeah, because when you put on your passport, there's no such thing as black or white on a passport. It's your nationality and your citizenship. So check this. This guy, mom from here, dad from here, you get this guy here. This guy is Ramses II. Now, Christ grew up in Materia near Cairo, which is Lower Egypt. So Christ grew up somewhere around here. Yeah, don't blanket statement the region and think everyone up here is light and everyone down here is dark. No, you do have interplay and interchange and forget the dark and the light for a minute. They have the same phenotype. So this is a Cairo Egyptian. I remember this is a Cairo Egyptian. See the same features? This is a Cairo Egyptian. This is Ramses II. This is a contemporary Egyptian in Cairo. Now, you do have a caste system in Egypt where the light skin is favoured uh, over the dark skin, but it's the same phenotypical type of people then. You understand? Anyway, so Christ grew up in Materia near Cairo, Lower Egypt. So somewhere around there. So we want the verses for the Pharaoh, right? So Exodus 1.11, oh, I want to I wanna dispel something as well. I want to dispel some nonsense that gets us in this, this awakening thing. This awakening, messianic, gated, controlled, just stupidity sometimes thing that's going on. And the, the, the Hebrews didn't build the pyramids, bruv. They might have built some pyramids, you know, it's a common thing. But in terms of like, they built the pyramids and no, no, no. Sorry, I don't want to burst people's bubble. Yeah. But Abraham bumped into Pharaoh and there was already a civilization called Egypt. There's already pharaohs, there's already monarchs, there's already a system in place, bruv. It, 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 anyway, what they actually did build, they built the treasure cities, Pitham and Ramses. That's, that's what they built. The treasure cities, Pitham and, Ram and Ramses. All right? Notice Ramses. 
So we know what dynasty was ruling. It was Ramses. Now, and Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt. So during this time as well, Joseph was second in command. So much in command in Egypt that he could give land to his people. That means he was loved. That they were loved and adored in Egypt. The people were favored in Egypt. Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt. In the best land. In the land of Ramses. So we know it was in the land of Ramses. And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. Interesting. Interesting. And interesting. So we know it was Ramses, 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 Ramses. Was it Ramses 1, Ramses 2? Definitely Ramses 2. But it is what it is. Now, a hopefully certain black-centric stuff is just fading away because if it's not true forget it hopefully certain white centric stuff is fading away let's continue let's come out of la la land this is amenhotep i think amenhotep predates moses then you have akhenaten now akhenaten was the first to introduce monotheism so before it was polytheism you know worshiping many gods and stuff like that then he brought it into monotheism and it didn't really go down too well because everyone was into polytheism. And I think he was assassinated. This is Akhenaten. All right. It was copper colored, man. Look at the features, though. It's the same features that we've seen previously. The nose shape and all these kind of things. And also, we had an afro, too. You can see that afro behind him as well. Yeah. There's his afro. There's his nose shape. This, that, the other. Now, then we looked at Dolicocephalic. We even made a song called Dolicocephalic. I didn't even understand... The most is funny, you know, like he, he, he shows me information before the time. And then when I look back, I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that that meant this and that meant this to this extent. You get me? So anyway, physical anthropology, physical anthropology of the Jews. So he says the physical anthropology of the comp contemporaneous Jews from being one of the debated questions in anthropology from the comparatively large number of measurements taken on the living subjects, authorities have drawn different conclusions. Some like Jacobs, Andre and others have maintained that the Jews are a pure race, the descendants of primitive Semites and also entirely unmixed with foreign blood. While others have stated the results of the study of the physical characteristics of the Jews are against this view. They argue that nearly all the contemporaneous people known to be of Semitic origin are dolicocephalic, as in the case of the Arabians, Abyssinians, Syrians, while the modern Jews of Europe are mesophallic, or even extremely brassiophallic, brings evidence that even the ancient Hebrews were already a mixed race. It is further alleged that the Afrometic measures, measurements reveal two types of head form, among the modern Jews, the long and round, which is evident, tend to indicate that the Jews are mixed race. And it's interesting as well, I believe uh, Muhammad, when referencing the Ethiopians, who often were mistaken for the Jews, he said that you should listen to your leader even if he has a raisin-shaped head. These are Sudanese Jews. So remember I showed you the map of Egypt and how Egypt is um, lower and upper. This guy looks like Albert Einstein, brother. <laughs> some some dark skin Albert Einstein. Interesting, man. Interesting, interesting. Or should I say interesting? Sudanese are often um, constricted to challenging economic circumstances. So these are Egyptians, contemporary Egyptians now, in Upper Egypt. So up, so when you look at Egypt, it's like the other way around. Upper, up is lower and lower is upper, right? So when we're saying Upper Egypt, we're saying like Sudan. So these are contemporary e Egyptians. Look at the features. That's all I'm going to say. Now, this is a, a modern Yemenite Jew. This is a contemporary, this is an old school Yemenite Jew. This is an Egyptian. Listen, when I went to Egypt here, yeah, I was just like blown away by how many different looking People that just didn't make sense outside of uh, Western convention, yeah. 
Well, check this. And how many people you see that you would think are like straight Caucasian with afros? They're like, how do you get that afro? How's your afro like that, bro? <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So this is a Yemenite. And this is also a Yemenite Jew. Interesting. Now, remember in Acts 2 to 11, I found it interesting. We all, it was about, you know, the gift of tongues and the outpouring of the Spirit. People were talking in literal languages because people that came from all over the diaspora for a feast day and everyone could understand intellectually what was being said. So some of it was being said and some of it was being heard and interpreted and they all understood. Now, how we, every man in our own tongue, where we were born, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Polyphia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene and the strangers of Rome and Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonders, the wonderful works of God. Interesting. I'll just put that in there to highlight there was a lot of people from all over the known world at that time coming together for a festival. All right. So when you go to uh, Ezekiel 8, 16 verse 3. So Ezekiel 16 verse 3. I always found this verse a bit interesting. Um, it says, and say this, this is what the sovereign almighty says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and your birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. A lot of the ruling elite of Yasharal or the house of this or the house of that. When you check it, you know. When, you, when it comes to research, don't ever go into... I'm, I'm going to give you a, a big piece of um, advice. Whenever you get into research, forget looking for something that makes you feel happy. Yeah, forget going into it to get... If you're Indian, don't be going into the history to get Indian facts. Only. At the expense of Chinese. Because Indian and Chinese don't get on. So now you're just looking at everything Indian, void of Chinese. Or this, that and the other. Yeah, like just look at history for history's sake and say, whoa, this is mad. I can see this today. Yeah. So interesting verse. It says, this is what the sovereign almighty says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother was a Hittite. When you look at, now let's go back thousands of years now. Yeah. Samson was always trying to have women outside of the nation. Yeah. And he was a judge of the people. Then you have King Ahab. He was a king of the people. And he went with Queen Jezebel. There's been a lot of this. And, and then when you check out the, the, the King Ahab and uh, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, they had children, you know. And those children would have been mixed. That's what you have. Anyway, it's just a whole thing to get into, bro. And no one really wants to go down this particular road because you realize that it's a bloodline. It's bloodline. <laughs> if this thing is true, it's all it's always been blood, it's always been not saying blood, it's always been a bloodline. That's why it says don't stress about genealogies because you'll go crazy. You'll go crazy. You'll be thinking this, but it's not. And if you're only into something because you think it's because of this and that, then your motive is misplaced anyway. But let's just go further into this little history. In this book, this Russian icon book, let me actually do a quick uh, summary before we go any further. So, I was showing you that Josephus says the man had a long nose, this Messiah, Jesus, Yahushua, said he had a long nose and he had eyebrows that met in the middle. This is not an image of Jesus or Yahushua, by the way. This is just a Romano Egyptian. Romano Egyptian. Yeah? Long nose, unibrow, curly hair. We looked at the scripture that says that he had no form of comeliness that you should desire him. He wasn't a stunning guy, even though a lot of images that tried to make him like Prince Charming. And then people get triggered by that, you know. They say, nah, that's a, they're, 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 they're tainting the scriptures. Why are they trying to say that he would look ugly? Yeah, you get all these beauticians come out and say, nah, you know, he was supposed to be pretty. And I don't care if pretty, ugly, ugly, pretty is what it is. <laughs> I cannot argue. Yeah. But going by what Josephus said, he said, man had a unibrow or eyebrows meeting above the nose. So meeting above the nose, to me, would be a unibrow. He had a long nose. So that looks like a long nose. And had curly hair. Then, 
we're just showing you what Egyptians today and in the past look like. So, here's an Egyptian from the past, Ramses II, during the time of Moses. Then here is an Egyptian president that was assassinated a couple of years ago. All right? And his name was Anwar Sadat. And there's Ramses II. Then you have Paul. And Paul was mistaken. That means you could mix and blend, you know. Art thou not that Egyptian? Which before these days made us so uproar and lead us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderous. And there you see, he's got the dosophilic head shape, dosophilic head shape, long nose, long nose, long nose. Now in Egypt, there's been many dynasties, you know, many, many dynasties. That means there's been many different epochs of rulers. When you get to the Alexandrian time period, hence if you have Egypt and it's called Alexandria, there's already, already a heavy Greek presence in Egypt, notably in Lower Egypt, which is North Egypt, which is Alexandria, which is next to the Mediterranean. That's just facts. So take that into consideration too. If you know about the genealogy of um, Nebuchadnezzar's statue, Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greece, then Rome. Yahushua was the time of Rome before Rome was the time of Greece. And Greece had a lot of um, engagement and interaction with Egypt, whether you like it or not. Let's continue. Let's advance. So I was just showing you those things. Then when you look at this book that's apparently going viral, um, again, and has a false video and all this kind of fake stuff behind it, this is what they show as baby um, Jesus or Yahushua in the book. I don't even want to trigger people with the buzzwords and all them kind of things there, but it doesn't look... What, whatever people's ideal is of black or white or orange and bananas, that's what was portrayed in one of these books, in the Russian icon book. Another image that was portrayed was this. Now this to me is, is a bit, it's a bit winging in my opinion. It's a, it's just a, it looks like a straight European guy <laughs> for me, but of a dark, this one looks more legit. This one I would give more credence to, but who cares? I don't care about images. Whether it's black or white, I'll burn all the images simultaneously. We're addressing this because there's a lot of fake news and a lot of fake sensationalism and there's weird stuff going on. Anyway, this is another picture that was in the, the book. Again, this looks like a hippie with um, ponytails, and you can see darker ones and lighter ones, but it's the same image, it's phenotypically, I just find it interesting. Alright, and this was one that's from the Russian icon book as well, there you see the straight nose, and then Jesus with a straight nose, curly hair and stuff like that. So, just something to think about, man. If you're going to say that this book is saying this and that, this is what it's showing. I don't particularly think this is that accurate, but I can see... Um, you know, that they put a Eurocentric spin on it a little, 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 small, small, but not a lot. This one I think is just straight funny. <laughs> this picture I find funny. Um, but yeah, I'm showing you that just because pe when people say black, for some reason, and no disrespect, you know, no disrespect, you know, in the American side of the world, people turn off their brain, you know, they hear black and the brain just is off. Yeah. The processing, it, it, it goes, but I'm trying to encourage people just to see beyond the veil of black and white and these masonic terms of endearment and just look at the facts. All right. Now, this is the video again. This is Russian Icons by Father Vladimir Ivanov. I hope I didn't butcher that name, but um, this is a book that is highly... So then this was an American brother six years ago um, promoting this book by a Russian. And then even when you look at the front of the book, it's not showing black. Because what people have done cunningly or just just generally, they're saying dark or dark this or dark that. And that's fine. And then they're saying black. And then people are inserting what black, what they think black is into the text or into the narrative. But you have to go back and analyze the conversation in its fullness without being partial or impartial, you understand? But again, there are some other people in America that get it and understand that there's some trick knowledge, there's some trick, no trick knowledge going on, you know? Some of them get, some of them get it. But I understand as well why people want to 
push any kind of dark imagery because when you go to the continent of Africa, it's a hot mess. Like those brothers on the continent, them sisters on the continent, it's a hot mess. Everything is Eurocentric to the max on, on the continent. But now I feel like in the diaspora, we're trying to black out everything with, to the point where it don't even make no sense. Next 10 years, we're going to say, I don't know, um, David Beckham was black or something. This, yeah, the same way they would probably say Tupac was white. You know, we're going to say David Beckham was black. And I think we just need to stop being a bit romantic with, with history and just let history be history, man. Whether it's good, bad, or this, that, the other, man. Anyway, that's just my opinion. It's not a fact. I'm not trying to offend anybody so don't get triggered. But uh, let's continue. Let's advance. Almost finishing. So this guy game, he's got a video uh, called Russian Icons. He's going through it. And I was just showing people that if you just use your, you just use your eyes, yeah, you see it. Um, all these dark reflecting images yeah well that's all it is yeah you do see various hair textures yeah cool just shown you it, oh, oh, Egyptians of the past and Egyptians of the present if you go to Put which is also uh, next door to Egypt well on the east side of Egypt you see the woolly hair too of the Puts which are the children of Ham so I'm just showing you that no one really has a claim on the woolly hair thing, you know. So don't make superficial things be identified all the time. That's all I'm saying. Look into the picture. There you see, I think that guy there adjacent is Paul. Um, I could be mistaken. And he's just showing you all these books and books and books. We've looked at this already. See, see the noses and the this, that, the other. Straight, woolly hair, curly hair, straight again. All right, so all I'm showing you do dolicocephalic head shape, straight nose, what have you. Again, again, same kind of setup. So it's all this already, so and then by the end of the book, they have changed it. The lightness into they've changed it to European, but it's the same, it's the same concept. You understand? It has become more Eurocentric towards the end of the book. I would agree with that. But in essence, it's the same phenotype. So there's two there's two theories of argument. One was that the Jews were unmixed bloodline and the other one was there were a mixed bloodline no it's not mixed race mixed blood bloodline lineage lineage bloodline lineage lineage now we know there's some that follow the bloodline of the woman and there's some that follow the bloodline of the man or the seed line of the man and then some people argue and say well in genesis it says the seed of the woman and then you break down to them that seed just means genealogy or lineage or posterity it doesn't mean Anyway, that's another kettle of fish. But you can see from the time of man like Samson, in fact, even when he gets to Tobit, he has to remind his son, stop doing what their ancestors keep doing and going to get exotic women or go in here and go in there. But then people generally didn't listen to the elders and did what they had to do. Yeah, which is the same today, rightfully or wrongfully. So it's just a repeat of history. Again, I showed this before. This is Felicitas or Felicitia and um, Perpetua. Perpetua was one of the first martyrs. Again, you can see this um, Solicity was her servant or for want of a better word, her hired labor or her slave or whatever, however you want to frame the term. But the slavery back then was different to the slavery today. Yeah, we have to understand how things work in the times in which they are introduced. For example, Joseph was a slave, but he was able to become second in Pharaoh's house. In fact, he was he'd be able to come so high that he was able to give his family land in the land of Ramses, which was which was Goshen. Yeah, so even in the whole system of this slavery in the past, it was different to the slavery that took place today or most recent. So this is her hugging her brethren. And her brethren's hugging her, and they both were martyred 
in Tunisia, which is Carthage, which is in North Africa, in a Colosseum, as a spectacle for following or proclaiming the Messiah. Now, this head shape here is dolicocephalic. Now, again, if you have a head shape or don't have a head shape, don't mean you are or you're not. We're just talking about how over time or in the past, they were known to have a certain head feature. And remember, there was also mistaken the Ethiopians all the time. Just something to consider. Like Michael Jordan head shape, <laughs> Tupac head shape. Again, the head shape is not a qualifier either. So don't be looking at people with a head shape. I'm just saying, when you look at it anthropologically, you go back and you just look at um, the evidences. Like, for example, Chinese people generalizing or Asian people tend to have eyes that are a little bit narrow. Yeah, so you can say, oh yeah, you must be from that particular place because you have a particular feature. You understand? But that you can't then you might see someone in West Africa who has them eyes. You know what I'm saying? So you can't really, but it's just good to have a, a frame of reference. Alright, so again, here's that image that we saw earlier, which is a bit interesting. I'm just gonna end on some random quotes, I think, unless people have got questions. Well, I'm gonna end on some random quotes. The, the, the pictures aside, they're just artist renditions from the Renaissance period, from the medieval period. During this period anyway, there was a lot of change in the portrayals of the apostles and the saints and all this kind of stuff. They started to change it more into a Eurocentric ideal so that it would be more palatable to Europeans. Slowly, slowly. But in certain places, you'd be surprised, especially um, Switzerland and them kind of places. You'd be surprised that they preserve certain things. Um, it hasn't been overly uh, altered all right let me end on this then so this is the Dodorius Seleucius is an ancient Greek historian uh, random but we're going to probably look into these things maybe another time so this is they say also that the Egyptians are colonists sent out by the Ethiopians so the Egyptians were colonists and they were sent out by the Ethiopians Osiris, having been the leader of the colony, for speaking generally, what is now Egypt, they maintain, they maintain, they maintain was not land but sea, when in the beginning the universe was being formed afterwards. However, as the Nile during the times of the its inundation carried down the mud from Ethiopia, land was gradually built up from the deposit. For instance, the belief that their kings are gods. The very special attention which they pay to their burials and many other matters of a simple nature are Ethiopian practices, while the shapes of their statues and the forms of their letters are Ethiopian. So one thing that these people, I used to, like people talk about Osiris and Horus and all these kind of things and they say they were gods and this, that, the other. Back in those days, there was just normal geezers, you know. Geezers are not a swear word, by the way. I know Americans are like, some Americans say, geezers are swear word? No, geezers are. We just say geezer in England anyway. But... They were just random standard geezers, you know, just normal guys, but they were kings. Or they were valiant on the battlefield. And sometimes they were deified as a god. So they'll say, oh, this is God Osiris. This is God Alexander. This is God ne Nebuchadnezzar. You know, like Nebuchadnezzar tried to turn himself into a god and tried to get worship. And if that thing would have took off, then in history and legend and mythology, they would have said, yo, Nebuchadnezzar was a god of Babylon, if that would have took off. But back in the day, like, even with, like, Genghis Khan, people call him a god, you know. Um, but they were just normal people, yeah, and did extraordinary things in battle, uh, in propaganda. Like, they just did some stuff. And, you know, like, today we make people celebrities. Well, back in the day, they would make them into a god or gods, you understand? So I found that, that quote very interesting in terms of how things are um, compartmentalized for history and how things can be taken out of context but generally speaking these guys are just normal uh, quote-unquote people that people highly regarded and vid all right next one again these are my random quotes so this one i found interesting this is by ibn Qatayaba, wahin ibn nuna abin and he said um ham the son of noah was a white man again very loose term but i do find it interesting he said white man because for the longest he's black man but again, it's just, it's just neither here or there. But let's just hear what he says. So he says, Ham, son of Noah, was a white man. It's interesting. 
with a handsome face and fine figure. And Almighty God changed his collar and the collar of his descendants in response to his father's curse. He went away, followed by his sons, and they settled by the shore, where God increased and multiplied them. They are the blacks. Now, it's funny, <laughs> there's a guy called um, Louis Farrakhan or whatever, and he put big, massive brainwash on the people in the American space, bro. And he was saying that basically, your eyebrows, black people weren't supposed to exist just because of their sin and rebellion that they became black. So he's basically teaching Mormonism and, and some other funky books. But then he said, like, your eyebrows, <laughs> I can't I'm thinking, yo, is this real? Anyway, he said your eyebrows are supposed, at regionally, our hair was never supposed to be curly or kinky or woolly, as he said. Uh, kinky, he said, to be fair. But it's supposed to be straight like our eyebrows. And the reason we, our eyebrows are straight and our hair's kinky is the most I wants to remind us that we were once straight, but now we're kinky. I'm just like, yo, he's going on in, in what is going on? Anyway, but these, these kind of um, tropes, have been around for a long time. The Greeks had a few tropes. The Greeks used to put down the Ethiopians, but at the same time, they would revere the Ethiopians. So it's just, there's always been, there's always, when it comes to um, nations and politics and geopolitics uh, and um, propaganda, it's been going backwards and forwards for a long time. Yeah. Um, but he said uh, they eventually migrated and became black. Some of the children went to the West, Hambegat Kush, Ibn Ham. Canaan, Ibn Ham, Foot or Put, Ibn Ham, Foot or Put, settled in India. So Put settled in India, which is interesting. Uh, put would be uh, Eritrean or Somalian or Ethiopian. Because that region that's called Ethiopia today wasn't always known as Ethiopia. It was known as other names over time. But just anyway and it's in, it's interesting as well that when you go to india there's a place called hindu hindu kush hindu kush so you can see there's been a convergence of two different people groups but anyway he settled in india and sind now we know where sind is from previous studies we looked at this this the sinites which is the branch that are oriental or chinese uh, in configuration and the inhabitants are his descendants kush and canaan's descendants are the various races of blacks now, what are the various races of blacks? Nubians, Sanji, Quaran, Sagawa, Ethiopians, Copts, and Berbers. But again, this is his opinion. It's not a fact. I just found this interesting as a little sidebar, a little side nugget. And I just encourage people as well. Um, explore, man. Explore, explore, explore. Question, explore, and get your answers that you're looking for. Peace.